Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss and continue with our series which we have started is about the location factors for the iron and steel industry, a very, very important industries and very relevant from the UPSC mains examination point of view. So till now we have covered the location factor for iron and steel industry in the Northern America. Today we are going to discuss about the locations of the major iron and steel industries in the Europe specifically the countries which are going to talk about today in the Europe where we have the biggest iron steel industries are Germany then we have France then we have Italy and then in the northern western Europe we have the Sweden and then on the eastern Europe we talk about on the coast of Black Sea we have the Ukraine so these are the three four countries where we are going to discuss about the location factors for the development of iron and steel industry so let us try to understand first of all one of the major producer of iron and steel in Europe is we have Germany here. So what are the location factors that have led to development of the iron and steel industry in Germany? So first of all, as you can see, the first factor is somewhere in the Germany, in the central part of the Germany and also in the border regions of Germany and France, we have the availability of very high quality of raw materials that is required for the iron and steel industry. For example, we have a region in Germany that is called as Ruhr Valley. So Ruhr Valley is a region that is very well known for the development of both that is or availability of both that is the coal as well as iron ore. And this is something that is very very rare because generally if you look at the distribution of mineral resources across the world what we find that wherever we have coal we do not have the availability of iron ore. And wherever we have the availability of iron ore, we do not have the availability of coal. So in this region, Ruhr region is in this uh, manner, Ruhr Valley is one of the uh, few regions of the world where both coal and iron ore are found in the same region. If you compare that with India, in India also we have a similar kind of situation that is in the Chotanagpur plateau of India, we have the availability of both coal and iron ore. And that is why uh, we can understand that Chotanagpur plateau is also many times referred by the name of Ruhr of India because of this reason. So first of all the raw materials, so raw materials are available in the Ruhr valley. So this is one region. Apart from that here is we go slightly to the south. Also we have one region that is bordering with France and Germany. Here also we have the Saar valley or Saar region we can say. So in Saar region also we have availability of the iron ore. So Ruhr Valley region and the Saar region, these are the major supplier of raw material for the iron steel industry of Germany. Now what are the other factors? So obviously as you know, iron steel industry is based on heavy raw materials and that is why transportation cost becomes a major factor in determining the success or profitability of the steel industry. So here how transportation is made accessible for these industries. So if you try to understand, now what we can see that here somewhere in this region we have the Alps mountain and from the Alps mountain we have a river that flows through this region. This river is one of the major river of Germany that is called as Rhine river and passing through the Ruhr region we have another river that is called as Ruhr river itself and Rhine river has connectivity all the way to the port areas and then slightly parallel to the Rhine river we have another river that goes all the way in the north to the port region of Germany. This port is one of the most important port of Germany that is called as Hamburg. So we have Elbe river, we have Rhine river and we have the Ruhr river. Okay, I will try to write it more clearly. Here we have the river that is called as Elbe river. So Elbe river is flowing parallel to the Ruhr river and Rhine river. Now Rhine river, Ruhr river are not connected naturally but we know that raw material is found where in the Ruhr valley. And transportation has to be done across the German region. So that is why the accessibility or inland waterway transportation has very well developed over the Rhine river. So for connecting the Ruhr river and Rhine river, a special canal actually has been developed that is called as Midland canal. So Midland canal, Midland canal serve as a very important route or mode of transportation as far as the iron steel industry is concerned, both for the transportation of raw material as well as the transportation of the finished product or final product. So we have raw material, we have the transportation. Third we can talk about is the power. So power or energy supply, energy demand of this iron steel industry obviously it is made by two way. First 
we have the coal rich region so thermal power plant is one of the major sources of power plant that germany is using and also if we talk about this region this is our north sea so right now obviously this route uh, of natural gas transportation has been disrupted due to russia ukraine war but earlier time germany was also getting the natural gas through the nord stream pipeline that was moving like this so nord stream pipeline for natural gas that also used to serve the energy demand of germany both for the industrial purposes as well as the household purposes so we have raw material we have energy demand that is met adequately we have the transportation the cheapest mode of transportation actually we have discussed yesterday if you compare roadways railways and waterways waterways are the cheapest mode of transportation so this industries basically save a lot of money in transportation now coming to the other important factors apart from these raw materials and all this transportation we have another very important factor that has led to development of industries in germany is availability of skilled manpower that means we can say this factor is what we can write as labor factor so as you know germany is very well known for its engineering prowess that means if you look at the universities of germany there has been continuously since a long period of time cutting edge research technology all these things has been going on and also they have a very robust engineering institution systems and also they attract the bright students from all across the world because mostly the german education system is free unlike the other countries and thus you do not have to pay tuition fee so this is the advantage that german engineering colleges and engineering universities offer which also provide germany with skilled manpower from all across the world and also germany remains uh, we can say especially in the steel industry especially in the automobile industry they remain way ahead from their other counterparts and last factor what we can write obviously because no matter what industries we are talking about if there is no market for the finished product of such industries industries cannot survive industries cannot function adequately so the market is one of the biggest factor and what is the major market that german industries basically tend to uh, tend to basically ship their products to so first of all we have several other industries that are situated here for example as we have discussed in the hamburg region we have the port region so hamburg we have basically development of ship building industry and we know that ship building industry requires huge amount of iron and steel products for their proper functioning then apart from that if you look at the nearby areas we have many regions are there such as some cities are there we have stuttgart for example then apart from that we have dusseldorf that is another important city of germany so both in the stuttgart region as well as in the dusseldorf region you have very big automobile manufacturing plants that has in, uh, that has been uh, developed here and all the major companies the german car companies automobile companies that you know about they are situated in the stuttgart and dusseldorf for example you have audi you have bmws you have mercedes and mercedes uh, mercedes volkswagen even so all these automobile industries are situated in the nearby region of stuttgart and dusseldorf that also basically demands a huge amount of steel products from the nearby steel industry so hamburg for shipbuilding stuttgart and dusseldorf for the automobile manufacturing so these serve as a market center and obviously if you look at the map of europe we know that this western part of europe such as germany france netherlands belgium switzerland these are the most population dense region of the europe so obviously since population density is very very high there are huge number of big urban centers that are situated here and thus the demand of steel products for the personal consumption is also quite higher in this region which also act as a magnet or market for the steel produced in these areas so that is all about briefly what we can talk about the iron and steel industry of germany now we can write the name of some of the major cities where the iron steel large iron steel plants of germany are situated so first of all if we try to write what are the major iron steel producing centers of germany here so first we have one center that is called as essen essen used to be one of the largest steel producing center of not only germany but of the entire world for quite some time after that that uh, this place was taken by bethlehem steel plant in usa then later on it was taken by the uh, steel plant in japan so currently the japanese steel plant yamata steel plant is the largest steel producing factory of the world but essen used to be one time major steel producing region apart from that 
as in we have other other regions steel producing regions in germany such as dortmund is there then dusseldorf both automobile industries as well as steel industries are situated here so as in dortmund dusseldorf then we have bremen is there bremen is also one of the major steel producing centers so these four name we can remember the major steel producing centers of the germany now if you look slightly to the east of germany we have another country that is france so there are some industrial development that has happened in the france as well and reason is very very simple because if you look at to the south of this ruhr valley and sar region we have a region in france that is called as loiran valley loiran region and loiran region is rich in the coal and that is why iron ore they obtain from germany and loiran region is rich in coal so what will happen both the major raw materials iron ore and coal is available here and if you go on this side you have a very big port actually this port of france is called as saint le hav so saint le hav is one of the major port on the bank of north sea or on the coast of north sea in the france and this port is very well connected by the roadways and railway transportation to this iron and steel producing centers of france and thus from there it can be exported the finished product can be exported to different different parts of the world and then apart from that we have so we have discussed in this region we have three major steel producing centers we have uh, ruhr valley in germany then slightly to the east we have sar region that is at the border of france and germany and then in the france we have the loiran valley which is well connected with the port of le havre on the north sea coast of the france here also one other major producing center in the france you have the city if you want to write about we have a city that is called as marseille so marseille is also a major steel producing center of france now interestingly if you look at that though the steel is being produced in germany the steel is supplied all across europe and why it is supplied so easily all across europe because there is very good connectivity and the cheapest mode of transportation that is river inland river transportation inland waterway transportation is very well developed here so let us try to understand this also and this concept is something that you can use in other kind of industrial locations as well because the transportation plays a very very important role in determining the in determining the development of industries in any particular region so if we try to understand basically what we have discussed that from the alps mountain we have a river that is called as rhine river that originate and rhine river is connected to ruhr river by midland canal now just to the south of rhine where we have the origin of rhine in the alps mountain we have another river that originates so from this side we have a river that originate traveling all the way to different different countries actually one of the longest river of the europe this river is called as danube river and danube river actually is draining into the black sea region and as we discuss rhine river is well connected to the north sea region now there is a small gap between this rhine river and danube river and this gap lies in the switzerland and in switzerland actually you have a city actually if you look closely on the map of switzerland here you have rhine river that is originating from alps on this side you have danube river that is originating from the alps and in between in a place in the city called as basel known for its banking codes and banking standards so basel is the city where they have constructed a canal that is called simply as basel canal and basel canal is providing connectivity between the rhine river and the danube river that means in one way what we can say that entire europe from the north sea coast to the black sea coast is very well connected with the danube river rhine river and the basel canal as well as the midland canal not only that we can try to understand this connectivity even goes all the way to the russia as well because here on the black sea coast you have another river this river is called as don river and then you have another river that flows like this from the caspian sea region this river is called as volga river and then don and volga river is also very well connected with the canal so for example if suppose if any product has to move from north sea to the interior part of russia how it move simply it will come to north sea coast then it can go to rhine river then it can go to danube river from danube river ships can take it to the black sea and from black sea it can be connected to the don river from don river it can be connected to volga river and volga river goes through all the major cities of russia such as moscow kazan and 
in the northern part of Russia. So that is how we have very well connectivity of river transportation, sea transportation and we can say a kind of multimodal transportation that is developed connecting the entire Europe and thus entire Europe actually act as a single market or single uh, we can say sources, single area having the industrial location. So France, Germany, now one other center of steel produce, pr uh, production is in the Italy. If you look at this, this is your Italy which is situated in the Mediterranean Sea. And Italy, we have several regions. If we try to write down the names of the major regions where steel is produced in the Italy. So, Italy, it is no, as we can see from the map itself, it is surrounded by sea from all the sides. So, there are a lot of ports actually that are in the Italy. So, one of the major cities that we can write where we have production of steel is Venice port is there. So, around Venice region. And to the south of Venice, basically in this side, you have a region that is called as Lombardy region. Lombardy is one of the largest industrial region of the entire Italy. And Lombardy is not only known for the production of iron and steel, it is also known for the production of automobiles. So, you have for example, scooters such as Vespa scooter, one of the very popular brand, uh, brands are there. We have Lamberta scooter is there. Lamberta scooter actually not Lamberta, Lamberta scooter, Vespa scooter. So all these basically are produced in the Lombardy region of Italy. So Venice, Lombardy, third we can write, Turin is another important city where we have the development of iron and steel plant in the Italy and also we have development of other super specialized industries in Italy such as sewing machine industries there that is very well developed, ball bearing industries there that is very well developed. So all these actually serve as a market as well. Now, Italy does not have the raw material or resources of its own. What Italy does is actually it imports raw material from the countries such as Germany and France and then they already have port access. So, it is much more easier for them to transport the raw materials and then around the port region, around the coastal regions, they convert these raw materials into finished products and this have emerged as one of the minor centers, if not major, of the production uh, is iron steel production in the Western Europe region. The other country about which we have to talk about in the Europe is obviously here. Now this is Sweden and this is Norway. So basically if you look at the geographical location of Sweden and Norway, this is what we can call as we have Scandinavian mountains. So this is Scandinavian mountains and from the Scandinavian mountains we have a lot of rivers that originate and flows like this. So basically a lot of rivers are originating from the Scandinavian mountains and flowing in the northern part of Sweden. So in the northernmost part of Sweden, in the area which is near, near to a place that is called as Lapland, because Lap tribe used to reside there, here we have a very important mineral resources region that is called as Kiruna. So Kiruna is very well known for its iron ore reserve. Now Sweden does not have coal of its own. So most of the time they were actually importing coal from the Germany and France. However, they have very rich reserves of iron ore. Then further to the south, now obviously we have the iron ore that is being obtained from the Kiruna region and to the south of Kiruna we have another city that is called as Galivir. So in the Kiruna and Galivir region we have development of iron steel industry because of local presence of iron ore and the second is if you look at the transportation, transportation is very well developed because here we have a port in Sweden. This port is what we call as Gothenburg port, a very very important port. The port is called as Gothenburg port. And this port is very well connected with the network of canals, railway lines, roadway lines that goes all the way from the south of Sweden to the north of Sweden. So Gothenburg Canal or Gothenburg Port both also serve as a major mode of transportation for the iron and steel industry. So we have raw materials, we have the power obviously cheap power, why cheap power, same region. What is happening? We are having a lot of rivers that are originating from the Scandinavian mountains and these rivers are used for development of cheapest electricity mode of electricity we can say that is hydro electricity generation. So we have hydro electricity, we have Kiruna mines and we have the Gothenburg canal access and we have well development, good development of the road, roadways and railway transportation and thus we have development of iron and steel industry in the Galavir region that is part of the Sweden and apart from that one other region you should know about that is located in Sweden which is also one of the major steel producing regions of Sweden 
is what we call as a dynamonic. So, three major centers are there. Kiruna, Galibir and Danamone in the Sweden that is in the northwestern part of Europe. Not only that, Sweden also has very good development of the market for the iron and steel. So, where most of the iron and steel being produced by Sweden is consumed or used for? So, the answer is Sweden has a lot of industries. Some of the major or notable industries where we have development of, uh, where actually we have the consumption of iron and steel we can say is situated in the Sweden. So, for example, we have Bofors. Bofors gun was manufactured in the Sweden. So, this basically we can say arms and ammunition industry is very well developed that consumes huge amount of steel. Second, we can say automobile industries such as Volvo brand, you might have heard about one of the major automobile brands of the world. So, Volvo also have their manufacturing industry situated in Sweden that also consumes huge amount of iron industry. Third, we can say Sweden also has very well developed aircraft industry, especially fighter jet aircraft. For example, Gripen, the, one of the most, uh, most well-known fighter aircraft to Sweden, Gripen, they have also have their industries, their manufacturing plant that is situated here. Apart from that, they also have well-developed refrigerator industries, such, uh, for example, if you talk about refrigerator industries are there, so that also are very well-developed, we can say here. So, we have refrigerator. So, both the defense based industries, military based industries such as arts, uh, artilleries, ammunitions, tanks, we have uh, guns, self propelled guns, hobbitgers, and we have automobile industries such as Volvo is there, we have aircraft industries such as Gripen aircraft, then we have refrigerator industries there. So, these also serve as a major domestic market for the steel that is produced in Sweden. And since, as we discussed, whatever steel that is being produced in excess amount by the Gothenburg port. They can be sent via the North Sea to different different parts of the world, including some parts of the Europe as well. So that is all about the Northwestern and Western Europe. We have discussed about the location of iron and steel industry in Sweden, Germany, France, and Italy. Now let us move to the eastern part of Europe, and let us try to understand that in eastern part of Europe we have one of the major country that is also in use for past one two years because of the Russia Ukraine war. So, Ukraine at least before war used to be one of the major centers of iron and steel production. And what are the factors there? So, let us try to understand this one by one. So, Ukraine is a country that is situated on the, what we can say, on the coast of Black Sea region. So, if you try to understand. Here we have the Black Sea region and this is somewhere we have the Ukraine, here we have the Don River as we discussed, here we have the Volga River. Now, in the easternmost part of the Ukraine, you have very rich reserves of both iron ore and steel, uh, iron ore and coal actually. Actually, yesterday I told you the best or highest grade of coal is what we call as anthracite coal. So, anthracite is the best quality of coal. And 50% of the global anthracite coal reserves are found in the US as we discussed yesterday. Where in US? In the Appalachian Mountains, Pennsylvania region of USA. The remaining 30% of anthracite, 25% we can say roughly, 25% of anthracite is actually found in this eastern part of Ukraine in what we call as Donetsk region. So, in the Donetsk region of Sweden, uh, of uh, Ukraine, we have the 25% of anthracite reserves. Remaining anthracite reserves are found in the, uh, in China, about 15% and then remaining 10% are found all across the world. So, India has this big problem. India does not have sufficient reserves of anthracite. It has a big reserve of, uh, we have bituminous coal and the lower quality of coal such as lignite and all. And that is why for the steel industry, for the coking coal purposes, we have to depend on import from either Australia or Indonesia generally. So, anthracite coal reserves are there. Apart from that, in the same region, you also have the availability of iron ore. So, both iron ore as well as coal is found in what we can say is the Donetsk region, in the Donetsk region of Ukraine, which is situated on the coast of Black Sea. And actually, here in the northern part, you have a city that is called as Kirvi Ro. So, Kirvi Rog is a city where you have highest quality hematite grade of iron ore, even magnetite grade of iron ore is found as well. 
So anthracite coal in the Donetsk, the iron ore is found in the northern bank, northern part of the uh, this Black Sea, that is the Krivi Rog region. And that is why this entire region here, Kriviri, Rog, Donetsk, we have a lot of steel plant. For example, on the, obviously, if there is a possibility of development of industry near the coast, industry will tend to develop near the coast. Because basically what will happen, the connectivity is very well here. Because from Black Sea, if you go to the south via the canals or the via straits of Dardanelles and Bosphorus uh, through the Turkey, you can actually come to the Mediterranean. Then from the Mediterranean, when you cross the Strait of Gibraltar, you can enter into the Atlantic Ocean. And from Mediterranean, if you cross the Suez Canal, you can enter into the Indian Ocean. So that is why Black Sea is a very, very strategically located sea because it has access to all the two oceans, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean. And then from these two oceans, obviously, you can go to the Pacific Ocean as well. So on the coastline of Black Sea, we have many important steel plants. For example, we have Nicopol, you can say. Then apart from that, we have Mario Paul. Then apart from that, we have Kharkiv region is there. So Nikopol, Mariupol, Kharkiv, Krivirov, Donetsk, this entire region of the Ukraine, that is in the eastern Ukraine, which is situated on the coastline of Black Sea. And that is where we have the main heartland or industrial heartland of the Eastern Europe, actually Ukraine is one of the most industrialized region of the Eastern Europe if you compare with the other Eastern European countries. So what are the location factors here? Again to repeat, we have the availability of anthracite coal in the Donetsk region. We have the availability of high grade hematite iron ore in the Kriviro region. We have the accessibility to the ports and then from ports actually you can go to the all the seas such as Indian Ocean, uh, Mediterranean Sea and from Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. So we have good transportation as well. Apart from that, what else do we have? Apart from that, we have very abundant supply of cheap and skilled labor in the eastern Ukraine because this was and still is one of the poorest region of the entire Europe if you talk about and that is why the cost of labor is very, very low as compared to the western European countries. So we have cheap, abundant, skilled labor and apart from that, as far as the power supply or electricity supply to these industries of the eastern Ukraine is concerned. You have very uh, big actually what we can call as the nuclear power plant that is developed again in the same region that is called as Japorizhia power plant. So in the Japorizhia region we have the nuclear power plant. So this nuclear power plant actually supplies power or electricity to all the industries that is situated here and once the steel that is produced in this part of Ukraine. Now, it is not that only this is this steel can be transported via the Black Sea to the different different regions. Even in the interior of the Europe, there is again inland waterway development as we have discussed. The new, the new river is there, and apart from that, in the Ukraine we have another river. This river is this river also connects to the east uh, connects the eastern part of uh, Europe to the western part of the Europe. So that is how we can understand the overall industrial location of the steel and iron industry in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, as well as in the Northern Europe. So I hope you understood about the basic concepts and the major factors that has determined the iron steel industry situation and location in the European regions. That is all for today's um, session. We will come tomorrow with the next session where we will talk about the location factors for iron steel industry in Asia. In Asia, we are going to discuss about Japan, China and India. Thank you very much.